Hi guys, Yoya from Sharp 11 Music here. Um, welcome to this week's Leg of the Week and this one is by James Carter. This was an amazing solo to transcribe, really. It was not a hell lot of fun, uh, to be honest, to dive into all those overtones, but it was really insightful at the end. Um, there's so much to talk about because he's using so many techniques and that's actually also what it is, more or less. It's super cool, the solo but it's mostly a lot of techniques, different techniques um, that are involved. <laughs> I just like this one so much it's rather long but that's because he's coming out of this uh, blues feel how he starts off this solo which is really nice very very groovy uh, and he elaborates a bit on uh, on rhythm within the blues scale and then he comes up with this he, he starts with the that blues thing <sighs> very classic blues and then one of his uh, techniques already that's where he plays those alternate fingerings and um, if there is a cross above the note that means it's an alternate fingering so that means you play uh, one of the overtones on the low notes to match that note so we have a normal F and then we play a F with a low B flat fingering so we can also uh, keep the octave uh, key down. So if you want to play this you should first practice your overtones that's really necessary for this kind of stuff. And then uh, you also notice that I made a ghost note on that same note uh, that might seem a bit odd but it's actually really it's really cool because if you do those alternate fingerings you can hear that it really pops out it has a lot of projection and by muting it again with the tongue with half tonguing that means putting your tongue halfway your read and by doing that you mute it like this it actually kind of functions like a compressor just puts it a bit down again so and then you get this uh, rhythmic effect and not a note is really jumping out like this so it's kind of a counter movement to not uh, yeah have that note pop out so then you have um, then the G is played with the low uh, C overtone and then the next line that's uh, also starting still with this blues in G minor that is for tenor and here he isn't muting it so much because you can with that F really hear that uh, low B flat still in it <laughs> And then on the G and the B flat, he's also doing an alternate fingering, but one of the smoother ones. You have a few different options on some of them. And here the G is not being played with the low uh, C, but rather with just lifting up the F key, the same uh, fingering, but then lifting up uh, that F key. And that sounds like this. Instead of which sounds more aggressive. And then the B flat, that's the same. We could actually play it with the low B flat fingering. But also there you can hear that aggressiveness in it from that low B flat. Uh, and I think he does it with one, two, three, and then the E flat key. As you can hear, it also moves the pitch a bit, really distinct and makes kind of a new B flat, but way more subtle. That's at least my guess. But if you listen to the line, there is quite some uh, variation in how loud the, um, uh, the overtones or the alternate fingerings are. So that combined sounds like this. 
And that's really nice. And in the same 16th line, then he starts to go real outside. And um, what is really happening there is not so much a, a certain functional substitute chord. For me, it seems to be, well, it's a very clear a try it what he plays on the 2nd, 16th, 3rd, 16th and 4th, 16th. That's just a inversion of an A try it. And we are still on a kind of G7, G sus uh, on this tune. And then he continues with actually a descending G minor major 7 sound. <laughs> Where comes that from? I don't know actually, to be honest. It's a G chord, a G sus, it's a it's a sound color over that root. And then if you see it in context. You also have that lower E in it. For me, it all sounds a bit like half tone, whole tone scale, if you combine it. Like a C half tone, whole tone scale. So that would be a so that are all notes within that bar that would fit in a C half tone whole tone. That's a certain sound he is using in really uh, astonishing way, I think. So. <laughs> And then the next bar, it starts on a C sharp. It's kind of more or less a combination between the, the blues uh, scale again. That's um, where the C sharp maybe is coming from, then a D. Then an E, which is a really nice color, the 13. You have one weird thing where I heard kind of a, yeah, a double C note. It was also that in pitch. I think it's a little bit of a tongue twister for saxophone players. You just put your tongue against the first C. So you mute that. And then by means of playing the next C is just, um, yeah, putting your tongue off the reed. So it gives that little nudge for the, yeah, for the next note. <laughs> And then that last part, that's something which really stood out for me already when just listening to the solo before I transcribed it. That ending, that E to the A to the E on a G chord, that means that he really uses the 13, the 9, and again the 13, um, yeah, in a melodic sense. And I really like that color. It's really bright, it's really... Um, it's inside, but in a way not really expected. So that's a beautiful way to end this melodic line, which started inside blues, then got really outside with this half tone, whole tone thing, and then came back kind of inside, but then with some nice flavors within the scale. For me also, it kind of looks like uh, if he was kind of coloring with a D minor there, if you... That's a pentatonic uh, of D minor and then going, if you think, in D minor to the E is a 9 and then the A is the 5th and the E is again a 9. That's also how you could view it. Either way, it doesn't really matter. It's just a very beautiful uh, sentence. Very well constructed by James Carter. I think this is one of Melodically speaking, one of the most interesting parts of the solo and all the rest is complete nuts. Uh, there is a lot of things to be discussed in terms of techniques, especially that thing with the, with the um, circular breathing and the... <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, I will make a separate video for that, for all the different techniques and there are many um, that are involved in this solo. That might be interesting and that will follow maybe in a day from this video. So I'm glad that you made it so far till here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe for more videos like this and transcriptions. 
and you can also find us on Instagram and leave a comment and I'll see you next time. Thank you.